Hello, and welcome to Breaking Utopia, the audiobook podcast. My name is Ian Patrick, the writer of Breaking Utopia, and today I'll be reading to you the first part of chapter one, called The Woman in Chains. So, let's get right into it. Chapter one, subchapter, The Woman in Chains. It was a night like any other in the outskirts of Falmouth. Cool air rustled the trees as it passed by. The birds slept soundly in their nests, safely away from the creatures below. And the steam lantern's bulbs in the town square began to fade, becoming one with the night, as the muddy streets glistened against the moonlight. Though, at the Cleon Plantation, a chaotic and important race was ensuing. The master's hounds howled in hysteria as they pushed their snouts to the ground. Fergus Cleon's men could barely hold the beast's leashes as they pulled and yanked against them. The eldest of the mutts, and most reliable, Truxy, was the first to get a good smell of the runaway. Truxy howled and yanked at Worker Gunder's leash, pulling him towards the Falmus woods. Master Cleon and the others quickly followed suit and raced into the woods, hoping their own mutts would pick up where Truxy left off. Their lanterns swung against the wind, and the light from them smacked against every bark and bush around the pack of wild hunters. Yet in all the excitement, one worker by the name of Cillian Bulk did not notice the strange purple eyes peeking out from one of the illuminated bushes as he passed. It wasn't Key's intention to be stationary, let alone entwined in the branches of shrubbery. To her credit, she was running before. She ran deep into the woods. Her lungs felt like they were filled with ice formed from the cold night air. She wanted badly to keep running, but she froze with the thought of what would happen to the others she left behind. Cray, Divor, Drana. They flashed in her mind and she froze, only to hear the dogs closing in and the shimmering golden light of the lanterns come across the trees. So, she chose the best place to freeze, amongst the thicket. It felt to Key as if half an hour went by, and the lantern slowly dissipated into the background of the woods. It seemed that now was the time for running again. Her only thought was in which direction, south back to Cray and her friends, or north to freedom. She rattled at her mind for the solution until something large and bulbous gripped her silver hair and yanked her out of the shrubs. Key fell to the forest floor and looked up to see Hergus towering above her with a nasty grin on his face. He was a burly man with an equally burly red beard. He didn't seem like the type to own a plantation, more like the type to work on one. Hergus worked hard to create his own plantation. It took years, but after the first War of the Divide broke out, Hergus found fortune providing rations to the Arkans. He was a proper businessman. Coming from nothing, he was not willing to let anything in the business slip. Key. Key was slipping. The red bearded man snorted and held a grin of contempt across his cracked lips. Been searching the whole woods for you, pretty cotton. A cruel nickname he gave no one could tell, if it was given for his own amusement or simply because he never remembered his slaves' names. Key was not paying attention what name he threw out. She was too busy eyeing the vial dangling by a metal ring on his belt. The vial held a bright blue fluid that seemed to be frosting the glass. He knew exactly what it was. He never went anywhere without it. To Hergus, it was a trophy and a way to prove to Key he held all the power over her. Hergus spat down onto the ground, bringing her back to reality. Wipe that grin off your face, pretty cotton, he said, leaning down to her. Key turned to him with a menacing grimace as she raised herself up to his face. Hergus Cleon gave an airy chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> I got two options for you, my lady, he said calmly as he snatched one of her hands and raised it to his lips. You come back home calmly, and I can take you to our fun room for the night. He kissed the palm of her hand with a menace in his eye. Or, I can burn this whole forest down with you in it. He looked at him a while longer as he caressed her palm, thinking of every which way he would gain pleasure from her pain tonight. She thought of all the things he would do to her, and all the things he already had. 
She thought long and hard. If she went back, she would save her friends, what was her only family, left from the days of punishment for her escape. He couldn't imagine what Hergus would do to her. She was his favorite toy. She didn't know what he would do with a broken toy. He thought of one last thing in this moment. There was an option C. And Cleon should not have brought that vial. He, with her free hand, ripped the vial from his belt and smashed it against the ground without a second thought. Hergus slapped Key to the ground in a rage. The hell do you think you're doing, you rotten red bitch? He screamed as she held her cheek beside the misty ooze of the shattered vial. As his chest puffed up and down, Hergus Cleon watched as the liquid turned to mist, and Key slowly raised her body off the ground. The mist seemed to trail up her body like a snake wrapping its prey. Hergus slowly backed away, stunned, the fear growing as the mist entered every orifice of her, as if it was a part of her finally returning home. The remaining mist that didn't seep into her mouth or nose covered her eyes for a moment, until Cleon witnessed them turn a neon purple as the mist slipped underneath her eyelids. A small runic birthmark on her neck lit up for a moment, the color of her eyes. As she gave a sigh of comfort she hadn't felt in a very long time. She was whole. Her master at this moment fell to his knees at submission. You thought I'd be the one to burn tonight, Key said with a sharp grin. Her fingertips lit with purple embers emitting from them. She felt her power coursing through her like fire. She was overcharged with power. And this was the perfect moment to take advantage of it. She waved her purple fingertips along the tree lines, and in an instant, they both were encircled in a blazing ring. The bearded master could feel the ground beneath him turn from cool dew to hot ash in seconds. This was no normal fire. It was something from another plane, something unnatural. He watched as Key turned her back from her ex-master and opened a small gap for her to leave the hellfire. You're a god, Hergus somberly said to the purple-eyed Rel. She stepped towards the threshold of her escape. Throvik, you call him. He would hate you to leave a man to die, would he? He cried out. It was one last chance to escape the inevitable. He paused for a moment, as if to give it thought. In that moment, something broke inside of Key. She looked over her shoulder to the red-bearded master on his knees, with the fire's smoke drying his wet eyes. No god would leave me to your chains, she answered with venom on her words, as the flames began to engulf the man. By morning, the small village of Falmus awoke to a burnt forest. It took two days for the Arkan guards to find all the bodies of Cleon's search party. They never found Hergus, only a pile of ash at the center point of the fire. They only knew it was Cleon's party when one Gunder Fassel never came in to town for his regular end-of-the-shift drink at the village tavern. They found Cleon's plantation abandoned, all of his slaves and many of his crops missing. All that was left behind was fiery rubble, what was once the beloved Cleon Mansion. And that does it for subchapter The Woman in Chains. Next time we'll be going over the next subchapter, The Good Bandit. I hope you guys enjoyed, and have a good one.